In this video, we're going to go over the Lab 6 individual data analysis. So we have our sheet here. We have several things we need to get. I've already opened up my Excels, including the individual. So there's a stiff landing, a braced landing, and the body weight. We're going to go ahead and take care of the body weight first. So this one wasn't zeroed. Uh, let's go ahead. Yep, that's my body weight. We're just going to go ahead and clear out pretty much everything. The only thing we need on this one is the FZ, because all we're getting is body weight. This was like a two second or so recording, one or two second. So, and I was staying on it the whole time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the average. I keep wanting to type mean because that's technically what it's called, but uh, yeah. So cool. All these values right here look like the end so I don't need to do anything special that's it that's my body weight and in a little bit we're gonna transfer that on into some of the other pieces but I can also go ahead and write it right here if I want awesome so uh, what we're gonna do first this is gonna be a little bit different uh, is that we have a lot of data here for both of these that is just um, when we're not on the force plate. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything that's not the FZ. And I know I landed on this force plate, yep, right there. We can see it's moving about. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all the unnecessary columns and rows. Now I'm going to call this one the stiff FZ and there's a reason we're going to actually merge both of the XLs into one here shortly. Uh, you just saw there's a ton of zeros. I'm going to go ahead and find the very last one. I want to get rid of all these zeros. They're unneeded. They're unneeded. It's just a, a ton more data than we actually need to look at. So I'm leaving one here, leaving one of them there. And I'm gonna, just going to double check the end. Yep, I walked off the force plate before it was stopped. I'm going to get rid of anything that's before that as well. I'm using my page up. This one was not where we did a jump. This was just a landing, so um, that's okay. We'll, we'll at least just include one, one zero at the end. doesn't matter that much. I'm going to leave this like this for now. I'm going to come over to the brace landing. We're going to do the same thing. Let's get rid of all these unnecessary um, rows and then columns. The same FZ, force plate 2. And now I'm going to call this one braced FZ. Put the Newtons there. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to highlight all the ones we don't need. Same thing. There's a lot. Come on. All right, there we go. Made impact with the force plate. Just clear out, but leave one of those zeros. And let's go to the end. We'll do the same thing down here. All right, a little bit tidier. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a blank workbook. And we're going to copy these into it. So we got our stiff landing. I just used my control shift. It might be command shift holding that, and then I hit down. So control shift holding both, and I hit down. Can copy that and I'll paste that in here. I just went one over because I'm going to do time here. And then we'll do the same thing for. Um, wait, did I copy in the stiff? Okay, I did. Let's do braced. Same thing. Copy. This was 4700. What was the other one? 4900. Okay. 
shouldn't matter that much, but uh, this one is just a little bit longer. So I just wanted to make sure that the time was going to go for the full duration. Cool. So we can see that at the most it was 4.9 seconds here. So the reason that I did this was so I could do our very first question on, well not very first, this, the question number three though, creating a scatter plot that will be including both the hard and the soft. In fact, um, I mean, why don't we just go ahead and call them that here beforehand. That was just, you know, make sure everything looks okay. Now we'll do scatter with markers. Okay, we can see sort of what happens. We can see for sure that the soft FZ had a much lower peak and uh, then the then the hard FZ. So cool. If we were wanting to get really really fancy, we'd we'd cut off a lot of this. Um, in fact, that might be a good idea. Why don't we just go ahead and cut off to about one second? One second is what I'm going to go to. And make sure you do include all the things. We're almost there. We'll go to one second. All right. Cool. And then I'm going to cut this. I'm going to paste it up higher just so we have it. Right here is good. And then go ahead and title everything so we can see this a little bit better now in terms of what's happening and how someone's landing. That was, that was the main idea. And then you can, once you get everything on end, copy and paste it on into here. Cool. So we have a few things that we're going to look at now. Let's go ahead and copy our body weight on. Actually, I'm going to do the whole thing. Copy this on in. Make sure you do value. Do not do do not do paste because that number is not your body weight. So paste value. And now we're going to start doing some of the impulse. And what I'm going to do is it's not going to feel like it makes sense at first. We're going to add three rows. We're going to add three rows there. This one's going to be um, our impulse. This one's going to be velocity. And this one will be power. Same thing here. One, two, three. And before I get too far ahead of myself, um, I have a box height here. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the velocity calculation here. We got the equations here if we ever need them. Um, so equals, we have square root of two times our box height. Uh, the box height, make sure you use the one that you measured. Uh, mine was uh, 0 0.325 and that's in meters divided by 9.81. Close. And I'm just going to go ahead and include it because this will give us time of impact. How, how, long, it, how long the drop was. Uh, but this if we multiply that already just by gravity times 9.81, we will get that and make, uh, make sure I need, I forgot, make sure you do include this negative. Cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this, paste it here. Not too shabby. I'm going to move this over ever so slightly. So this is all of our setup. Now. Let's go ahead and do uh, impulse here. We'll just set it up like so. Peak power, mean power, landing time, work, peak force, and peak, not pair, peak RF. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a hard and soft here. That's going to be for the hard landing. This one's going to be for the soft. 
So we're just doing all of this on one, one sheet, as it were. All right, now the fun begins. So we'll go ahead and start working on our impulse. So equals, now we're gonna do column right next to it, minus the body weight, and then plus the column right, uh, not the column, the row right above it. We always do the one right before it. And again, minus body weight, divide by two. Multiply by that change in time. All right, so this one is not going to be where we add the previous number of impulse. Um, very important, do not, do not include that. All right, one thing we do need to do is we need to add these dollar signs before we do the double drop down, as it were. All right, let's go ahead and do this now. So we see it's increasing, changing, cool. Now, uh, velocity, that was our impulse divided by our body weight and divided by 9.81. So equals to the impulse currently, or at least at the corresponding value, divided by body weight divided by 9.81. And then we add, we add the previous velocity number. There's, if we were to write this out by hand, there'd be three negatives. So that's why it's like this. Uh, so I just went ahead and took the liberty of doing the negative here and then doing an addition. Cool. And I forgot to keep pointing it at our, at my weight. Uh, that's, that's again my fault. All right, don't, don't put in a percent sign. There we go. All right, everything looks good. Now, we're calling landing when someone is at, uh, passes from negative, right here, from a negative number. When they cross a negative number to a positive number for their velocity. That means you have overcome that velocity and you are, at least at that moment, you're at zero and everything past that's going to be a positive uh, velocity, at least. Cool. Now, let's go ahead and do our, um, our power. So that's velocity times the corresponding force. Velocity times the corresponding force. And we were going to do the absolute value of that. I'm going to add that in here. So it gets rather, rather large, rather large number. All right, not too shabby. Okay, now here comes one of the fun parts. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all this. I'm going to come over here. Make sure you're on this specific one, the one right below the zero on impulse and right next to the FZ. Paste. It's not going to look right at first. And the reason being, our time is not correct. All we need to do is move this time over. Don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. It's okay. There we go. All right, now we are pointing at the correct force. We're pointing at the correct body weight. We're pointing at the correct time. Now we can do the double drop. See, that was easy. That was fun, wasn't that? Now we don't have to do it on two separate sheets and type in a whole bunch of stuff. Cool. So let's follow this velocity down since this is my soft. Oh, okay, so I'm still in the negative here when the, um, when the hard, hard one had just landed. 
So that makes sense because the hard one is a very stiff landing. So I'm still decelerating or, de or decelerating and lowering my velocity. So right about here-ish. I'm going to call that, I'm, going to, I'm just going to put a mark here. Um, we'll call it FZ, uh, no, not FZ, soft land. And we'll go up and make a, a uh, hard land as well. Up oh, right here for me. Cool. So these are those are just marks of demarcation that make it easy. So sum. Sum of the impulse starts from zero and goes to our mark. So right when it becomes positive, we're right at that mark for hard landing. Cool. We'll do the same for this. Unfortunately, we can't just drag it over or drag down. Uh, we couldn't, no matter how we set this up, because it's not going to be the exact uh, length, length. So we got to go all the way down to the soft landing, and I passed it. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong column. Oh wait, no, I'm on the right column. I I just wait. I just blew way past it, and wasn't paying attention. Okay. So velocity. Soft landing, good. Oh, hey, look at that, the impulses. They're pretty much the same. Very cool. Now we'll look at peak power, so max power. And this is during the landing portion when, when it's still above zero. So hard landing, max, 11,000 watts. Ooh, pretty, pretty uh, spicy. Max. Now for the soft landing. And again, blew, blew way past it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so close to half almost. Now let's look at average power. Uh, for this one, do not include that zero. Do not include the zero. Hard landing. Soft landing. All right. Okay, yeah, we're close, pretty close to half. Landing time. This one's going to be a little bit easier. Hard landing. We'll use the hard landing end time. This minus our start time. Start for land. Okay. And then same thing for the soft. Make sure you do go down to the soft one, though. So right here, minus. And right after the zeros, right here. OK, so we had a pretty substantial difference in time there. Work. Work's going to be using our mean power. Mean power times your time, your landing time. And same thing, well, actually, we can just drag, not drag down, I'm going to do Control or Command D. That just brings down what was above and applies it to the correct cells below. Peak force. Now we're doing max, max force. Again, for the landing. Uh, pointed to the wrong one, that's my fault. All right, here we go. Yeah, do... do I know I got them both here, but please don't try to mix and match. Um, max, like I almost just did there. All right, soft FZ. There we go. And lastly, peak relative force. Force Z, or peak force Z divided by body weight. Go ahead and take this value divided by body weight. This divided by body weight. So we reached 7.2 times our body weight for the hard landing and 3.3 times for the, uh, the soft landing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, on your own you can copy and paste these into, into here. They're all lined up like so. Uh, anyway, if you do have any questions, 
please contact your lab instructor. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.